Hello. We're looking at a bell-shaped curve here. That is a normal distribution. And in this problem, we're going to be asked to find the area under the curve and report it as a proportion. Here's our question. In a normal distribution of test scores with a mean equal to 70 and a standard deviation equal to 12, what proportion of the test scores will be greater than or equal to 68? To answer this, we're going to need to visualize it. That's going to be the first step, and it'll make this problem so much easier. So let's put some of the information from this question onto our picture. So we have here the line drawn right down the middle of the normal distribution. The score is 70. That is the mean. One standard deviation above is going to be 82. That is 70 plus 12 gets us to 82. That standard deviation is drawn right where the curve changes from going downward to moving outward. We also have marked here two standard deviations above, one standard deviation below, and two standard deviations below. Now we're ready to take a look at the second half of this question, which asks what proportion of the scores on the test will be greater than or equal to 68? So now we have 68 also on our normal distribution. And we can see that 68 is just a little bit below the mean of 70. Let's go ahead and fill in the area that this question is asking about. That is the test scores that are equal to or greater than 68. So we're interested in all the scores from 68 above. And that area is now highlighted in yellow. What will our answer be? Well, proportion ranges anywhere from 0 to 1. 0 means none of the population. 1 means the entire population. And 0.5 is half the population. Again, you can either have like one whole pi, one. You can have a zero pi, none. Or half a pi, 0.5. So our answer is going to be a little bit more than 0.5. For convenience sake, I've gone ahead and labeled the three areas of our normal distribution as A, B, and C. C represents the upper half of the distribution. B represents the area between the mean and our score of 68, and A represents everything below. And anytime you have one of these types of problems, whether it's proportion, percentage, or percentile ranking, you're going to be able to divide your distribution into three uh, segments, three areas. The, there will be one line for the mean and one line for your score, resulting in three different areas. So we have A, B, and C. Let's take a look at what each of those areas represents. So as mentioned, C is half the distribution. So let's put that into our problem. OK, so we know that at least half of the distribution is included with the people who have a test score of 68 or more, because half the population is at 70 or above, 70 being the mean. OK, so what proportion of the people are between 68 and 70? If we can answer that, this has become a very simple question to uh, respond to. So what is that area between the mean and our value of 68? To solve this, we're going to need to calculate a z-score and go to the z-table. So let's go ahead and do that uh, z-score. Our formula z-score is equal to the value minus the mean over standard deviation. Remember that a z-score tells you how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. A z-score for 58 would be negative 1 to say you are one standard deviation below the mean. A z-score for 94 would be positive 2, to say it's your two standard deviations above the mean. What then is a z-score for 68? Our z-score will be 68 minus 70 divided by 12, or 2 divided by 12, which when we use our calculator, comes out to be point, if we round to the hundredth place, which is what we'll use for a z-table, 0.17. There are two tables we could possibly refer to. One table lets you know the area between the mean and the z, and it works whether the z-score is above the mean or below the mean. just tells you the area between the mean and z. The other z-table is the area beyond z. It works whether it's a z-score that's above the mean, and it's telling you what's between that z-score and the end, or if it happened to be a z-score below the mean, and it's telling you what's, between, what's from that z-score, again, towards uh, the end in the other direction. For this problem, we're interested in the area between our mean and our z-score point uh, 17 and that should be a negative 0.17 a negative 1.7 saying that we are below the mean so again coming back to the z-table we're interested in the area between the mean and z for a z-score of 0.17 so here is z-score of 0.1 and now we're going to move to the right until we find 07 and this represents then the proportion of values between the mean and the z. Notice I looked up a positive 0.17. That works because 
the normal distribution is symmetrical. The area above uh, is similar to the area below. So looking up at negative 0.17 is the same as looking at 0.17, and that proportion is 0 0.067. Okay, so now we know what C equals, we know what B equals, and we're only asked to find this area that's 60 and above, and by adding B and C together, we can get the answer. B is 0 0.067, C is 0 0.500. When we add those together, our answer is 0 0.567. So, in a normal distribution of test scores with a mean equal to 70 and a standard deviation of 12, what proportion of the scores on a test will be greater than or equal to 68? Our answer is 0 0.567. Okay, bonus question. What if you had been asked to answer this, but instead you were told what proportion of the scores on the test will be less than or equal to 68? What if it had been the less than or 68? What could you have done? You know the z-score is negative 0.17. And if you were asked for the scores below 68, which z-table could you have gone to? Area between the mean and z, or the area beyond z. If you're saying it's the area beyond z, you are correct. And so in that case, we would look up 0.1, and here's um, 07, so 0.17, and that area is 0.433. Let's just add that to our uh, drawing. Great, so here's our 0.433, and let's add up our three areas, the so 0.433, the 0 0.067 and the 0 0.500. So we get 0.433 plus 0 0.067 plus, hmm, look, just adding up A and B, that's half of the distribution, that makes sense, plus the other half gets us one. That's everything here. So if you wanted to find our area A, you could just go to the z table, look up the area between uh, the area beyond z. But there's another way you could have done it too. You could have said 1, that is the whole area, minus 0.567, and that gets us our 0.433. If you draw this out, if you record what each of these areas is equal to, you take a problem that could be a challenging problem, and you make it a much more simpler problem. All right, wish you very best luck in all of your uh, homework and class activities.